Collagen is a big deal, but in today's world of social media, the word collagen has become a buzzword with a lot of misconception and misleading information about it. If you have a true understanding of what collagen actually is and how to protect the collagen that we have and how to restore collagen that's been lost, you'll be able to maintain your youth significantly longer and look and feel great for years and years and decades and decades. I decided to do a two-part video series to teach you all about collagen for anti-aging and for longevity. In today's video, we're going to discuss what collagen actually is and the process of aging and how it degrades collagen over time and things that you're encountering every day without even realizing it that could be degrading your collagen. Next week's video, I'm going to teach you all the things that you can do to build, protect, and restore your collagen. At-home remedies, things that are free, supplements that you can take, in-office procedures that you can do, and also debunking collagen myths that are simply untrue and propagated by uneducated people. So be sure to like this video if you're excited about this topic and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss part two of this video series. All right, let's get into it, you guys. So what is collagen? Collagen is a structural support protein that exists not only in our skin, but our eyes, our teeth, our muscles, our bones, our tendons, our cartilage, our ligaments, a lot of structures in the body. And what it does is it supplies, it supplies structural support for the skin. It's what gives skin that smooth, bouncy texture. Babies and kids have a ton of it. That's why they have smooth contour and bouncy cheeks. It provides extracellular matrix proteins that make up the skin's natural turgor and strength. And as we lose collagen over time, that's why we get volume loss and that's why we get saggy, crepey, thin, wrinkled skin. Collagen is a structural support protein in the skin and it's made out of a chain of amino acids and it's also made up of a precursor called procollagen. And procollagen is made up of amino acids including glycine, lysine, and proline. The molecular configuration, or as we talk about in chemistry, the structural chemical motif, is a triple helix that is in a helical configuration made up of polypeptides, which in science just means basically amino acids and proteins are linked together in a chain. And there's a three components to this helical configuration where it's wound down in like a coil-like structure that provides a structural support to the skin. If you have any questions about anything, you can always ask me in the comment section or you can always Google and try to kind of understand more from a scientist or a physicist perspective on how we talk about the structural components of the skin. So how is collagen lost? What happens between the time we're babies and kids and young adults to as we go into our later years, why our skin becomes wrinkled and our skin becomes thinner and our skin becomes laxed and it becomes wrinkly. What happens is we lose those structural components, those extracellular matrix proteins in the skin. And it's not only collagen, it's elastin and it's glycosaminoglycans and it's other molecular sugars in the skin. We lose 1% of our collagen each year. And this starts at age 20. So not to scare my little baby beauties out there who follow me, but this is a scientific lecture that I heard when I was 19 or 20 years old, and that's why I jumped on the bandwagon of doing things in my life that I could restore my collagen and protect my collagen back like in the 90s when nobody even cared about this stuff. I thought it was very intriguing to understand the process of aging and how it affects our collagen in our skin. A lot of dermatologists will talk to their patients and say you lose 10% of collagen each decade, and that's absolutely true. Up until age 20, you're still building collagen and your fibroblasts and your keratinocytes are upregulated and they're functioning optimally, but as they slow down and as we start accumulating a lifetime worth of insults that are going to continue to break it down and we're not building it up fast enough like we used to, that's when aging starts to happen. And that's what we start to see, you know, in our 30s and our 40s and then after menopause it worsens because there's estrogens and hormonal components in the skin that kind of accelerate this process. What breaks the collagen down includes a multifactorial different things and it depends on where you live, what type of climate you're in, how much stress you're under, your diet, your cortisol levels, your hydration status how much time you're in front of blue light or in front of a screen, are you protecting yourself? Things that we can do to decrease the degradation of collagen is just as important as collagen banking and restoring our own endogenous collagen sources. The number one entity that usually breaks down collagen in an accelerated pattern is UV light. Now you have UVA1, UVA2, and UVB light. UVB light on the electromagnetic spectrum is actually more responsible for skin cancer, so it's very important to photoprotect against the UVB rays. But the UV 
UVA rays, UVA1 and UVA2, are the ones that are responsible for brown spots, which we call solar lentigines, aging, thinning of the skin, loss of collagen, loss of elastin, loss of those extracellular matrix proteins, which thin the skin, cause dermal atrophy, and causes fine lines, wrinkles, larger pores, accentuation of acne scars that we had when we were younger that are now looking more open and stretched out as we get older because we're losing those structural fibrous components of the proteins in our skin. That happens from ultraviolet light. And although you can photoprotect and use sunscreen, you're still getting day in and day out exposure from UV light, like it or not, wearing sunscreen or not, that's going to accelerate aging over time. Now, those of us who use sunscreen, even though that's not going to protect you 100%, it will dramatically decrease the photo damage and the degradation of collagen and elastin fibers in our skin that will help keep us looking more youthful over time. So what does collagen breakdown look like when it's affected by UV light? So when you look at skin that is where the sun don't shine under the microscope and you look at skin that hasn't been exposed to UV light, when collagen hasn't been exposed to UV light, you have these thick pink fibrous bundles of collagen. And in kids, you have this reticular and papillary dermis that's just chock full of these p thick pink, almost like strand band-like collagen proteins. When you look at sun damaged skin, the epidermis, which is the uppermost layer of the skin, looks atrophic. The collagen fibers are thin and wispy and degraded and broken down. So the collagen's still there. It almost looks like it got blended up in a blender and spit out. So it's not providing any structural support. Now what happens is when there's degraded collagen like that, your immune cells will come and eat it away and hopefully synthesize new collagen. But it's not happening at a rapid pace. So you're breaking down your collagen faster than you're making your collagen. And so that's why things that stimulate collagen in office procedures, skincare products and so forth, which we'll say for the next video, become really important. But looking at the mic under the microscope at the histology of the skin, the collagen is just flimsy and degraded and broken down and honestly looks like it got spun down by a blender and just spit out. When you look at collagen that has a structural support, hasn't been degraded by UV light, it's just as this beautiful, remarkably different looking appearance under the microscope. And when you correlate that to the biopsies from the patients in which they've been taken of, the thin, degraded, broken down collagen matches up to the you know, photo damaged, weather beaten, thin skin with brown spots and lackluster laxity and wrinkled skin that has been UV damaged as opposed to someone who's been using sunscreen that has beautiful skin clinically. Their skin looks beautiful under the microscope too. And it's really remarkable to see the correlation of what it looks like under the microscope and what you see clinically. So the goal is to have healthy, chunky, pink, healthy collagen fibers which manifests and correlates clinically with beautiful, smooth, tight skin that doesn't have fine lines, wrinkles, brown spots, and a bunch of sun damage. Another insult that our skin endures on a day-to-day -day basis, which you may not be aware of, is blue light. So blue light is on the electromagnetic spectrum between infrared light and UV light. It's in the visible wavelength spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. Blue light gets emitted from our devices, our iPads, our tablets, iPhones, our computer screens, and it's something that we endure on a day-to-day basis. So whether you're talking about blue light or ultraviolet light, what these energy sources do to the skin is it increases oxidative stress. Okay, what does that mean? Oxidative stress is when free radicals are bouncing around in the extracellular matrix substance of the skin and they're degradating proteins. They're degradating collagen and they're degradating elastin and it also upregulates an enzyme called matrix metalloproteinases, which also is a collagenase type of enzyme that breaks down collagen. So with the oxidative stress from the blue light and UV light, with increased matrix metalloproteinases, with free radicals bouncing around all over the place, you can think of them as like little fireballs or firebombs that are just bouncing around and just like almost in a video game, or anything it touches, it's just going to break it up and destroy it and make it non-functional. So your immune system comes in and cleans up the mess and hopefully increases and restores that collagen. But as we get older and we have more damage and we have less of a response to make new collagen, that will accelerate aging. And that is the physiologic process that happens when our skin encounters blue light and UV light. Another stressor that can degrade collagen is excess glucose or high glycemic index foods. A hemoglobin A1C, which is basically, I used to have an attending that would call them glazed donuts. If you think about your red blood cells as donuts and you think about glazed donuts because your poor red blood cells have been exposed to so much sugar that they get coated with almost like a sugar glaze, that happens in all areas of our bodies. It happens to our collagen as well. And high glycemic index food or glycosylation of the collagen fibers can bring 
break down collagen just like UV light does, just like blue light does, just like environmental pollutants and toxins can do. So all these different mechanisms of action in which collagen gets broken down happen in various ways and each mechanism of action may be a little bit different, but the way high glycemic index foods, sugars or processed foods or processed sugars can increase glycosylation of those collagen fibers and cause breakdown of those collagen fibers. Elastin fibers too, and this doesn't just happen in the skin. This happens in the muscle, the bone, the cartilage, and other areas of our body, so it is literally accelerating aging. So not only will you look older, but you'll probably feel older and you'll feel less healthy when eating high glycemic index foods. You want to also avoid simple carbohydrates like white bread, pasta, white pasta, white rice, uh, popcorn, things of that nature that are going to easily convert into glucose and sugarcoat essentially or glycosylate our collagen fibers causing degradation because when that happens we lose our elasticity, we lose that structural support of the skin and we start to get thin wrinkled textured looking skin. High glycemic index foods also have a propensity to be pro-inflammatory. So being pro-inflammatory, you're also going to have inflammatory cascades coming in and breaking down your collagen and elastin through a different mechanism of action, through an immune response. Being select with your dairy source is really important because like sugar and high glycemic index foods, dairy can contain sugars but also more importantly can contain hormones that can have a pro-inflammatory effect on the skin which can in, in turn degradate collagen fibers and damage collagen fibers to lose that structural support of our skin. So it's a two-fold process. The pro-inflammatory cascades and chemokines, in addition with the glycosylation of our extracellular matrix proteins, can also be and can be accelerating aging as well. Also avoiding skim milk because although that there is less fat, there's less fat to bind up the hormones and that could be even more pro-inflammatory when you're thinking that you're doing a good thing by drinking skim milk. So always make sure that you're going for more plant-based source or grass-fed because there could be hormones in uh, dairy products that are not only pro-inflammatory, but there also could be a lot of sugar that can not only glycosylate collagen, but through pro-inflammatory cascades and chemokines can be degradating your collagen as well. Let's talk about stress, you guys, because stress leads to increase cortisol levels and we know that cortisol wrecks havoc on the skin. Cortisol levels increase when you are stressed and they increase when you lack sleep. And what happens is they bind the glucocorticoid receptor and that can degrade collagen types one, types three, and type four in the skin. It also binds to the AP1 receptor, which is the activator protein one receptor, which increases matrix metalloprotein A7 and I think it's one and nine. Oh, sorry, two and nine. And what that does is the matrix metalloproteinases are collagenases. ACE, A-S-E at the end of any word in science, you guys, because you guys are my little beauty scientists and I love that you love science. So A-S-E means enzyme. And any, you know, collagenase, proteinase, glycosylase, ACE at the end of anything means enzyme. So collagenase is an enzyme that breaks down collagen and matrix metalloproteinases are collagenases, and they get elevated with elevated cholesterol, which happens when you deprive yourself of sleep or when you're stressed. And so that degrades collagen, so you have this thick, beautiful bundles of collagen that have these matrix metalloproteinases, breaking them down, degrading them, so they become flimsy, fragile, disfragmented, and dysfunctional collagen that no longer provides beautiful, plump, healthy skin, but creates wrinkled, weathered, textured skin. So that's how cortisol and stress it can have a direct impact on your skin. So do what you can and do what you need to to decrease your cortisol levels. Avoid artificial colors. They're pro-inflammatory, they increase chemokines and inflammatory cascades which can break down collagen and elastin, the structural supportive proteins in our skin that can cause diminished structural integrity of the skin, fine lines, wrinkles, increased pore size, accentuation of acne scars, thin, weathered, wrinkled, sun-beaten, weather-beaten skin and avoiding artificial colors in addition to artificial sweeteners is really imperative to overall skin health and maintaining a youthful, healthy glow. Next one, smoking. People who smoke have an increased propensity for connective tissue disease and connective tissue degradation, collagen degradation, elastin degradation, and it's the fastest way to accelerate aging, you guys. I don't care if you're smoking, if you're vaping, how you're doing it, but it's breaking down your collagen. Even when I would do skin cancer surgery as a Mo surgeon, when we would have patients who would smoke, their grafts wouldn't take, their transposition flaps would dehiss, they wouldn't heal, their skin couldn't renew itself, 
And not only does it accelerate the breakdown and degradation of your existing collagen, but it slows down the process in which your skin can replenish and regenerate collagen. So it is just like a death sentence for your skin and the fastest way to accelerate aging. So smoking, Let's talk about all the harmful effects that smoking has in the skin. It increases proteoglycans. It increases matrix metalloproteinase breakdown of the collagen fibers. It decreases your skin's ability to regenerate itself. It increases reactive oxidative stress and the reactive oxygen species, which are those free radicals that are bouncing around just wrecking havoc and damaging all your beautiful thick healthy collagen, just diminishing them. Again, putting it in the blender, spinning it around and spitting it out so it's totally dysfunctional and causing crepey, wrinkled, aged skin. Some of you guys may think that vaping is a healthier alternative, which is absolutely not true. So vaping of nicotine or vaping even of THC can degradate and degrade collagen. So I don't care how you're doing it, whether you're smoking tobacco or you're vaping tobacco or you're vaping even THC, it can still break down your collagen and impair your body and skin's ability to regenerate itself. So just stay away from all that stuff altogether if you want to have the best looking skin. The next thing that we encounter that can break down collagen is alcohol. I know you guys aren't going to want to hear that, but alcohol, alcohol can not only increase oxidative stress, increase reactive oxygen species, increase matrix metalloproteinases, increased glycosylation and breakdown of collagen through that mechanism of action. It decreases vitamin A in our bodies. It increases liver oxidative stress enzymes and detoxification enzymes, which can have an effect on collagen, promoting collagen breakdown and degradation. It does many other things too. It also dehydrates the skin and when collagen fibers are dehydrated, they're more prone to cracking and fissuring and becoming dysfunctional. So because of many reasons, alcohol consumption can break down collagen at a faster pace. And in addition, it also decreases your body's ability to regenerate collagen at a healthy pace to make up for the fact that it's being degraded. Caffeine can decrease collagen stores and it inhibits an enzyme called prolidase, which is important in collagen synthesis. When you have collagen synthesis from the pro-collagen molecule, which is made up of proline and glycine and lysine and it gets converted to pro-collagen and then it gets converted to collagen and then there's a degradation in the resynthesis of collagen there's an enzyme involved in that and that gets decreased and inhibited by caffeine caffeine also increases cortisol levels which we already said that cortisol levels increases matrix metallic proteinases which can break down collagen and also it can dehydrate the skin that gives skin a lackluster kind of wrinkled texture because when you devoid the collagen molecules of hydration and water binding the molecules, it dehydrates the skin and can also thin the skin, giving it kind of like a wrinkled texture appearance as well. Non-coffee related forms of caffeine like green tea will contain green tea polyphenols, which actually can protect collagen and be pro-collagen stimulation. So look for polyphenols, which are good for the skin. And then you just want to limit your caffeine intake because it can have negative deleterious effects on our collagen. I never want to take caffeine away from anyone. I actually went coffee free for about a year and now I'm still back on my my coffee and you know when I work out I don't do pre-workout or anything like that I'll either have you know some coffee before I work out or green tea but if you could drink more green tea than coffee that would be better and beneficial because both contain polyphenols which um, are healthy for collagen and healthy for the skin but coffee unfortunately especially if you're adding creamer there's dairy there glycosylation increased pro-inflammatory cascades increased glycosylation and collagen breakdown and it also can increase our cortisol levels with respect to coffee but green tea has more anti-inflammatory um, effect and also protects active um, polyphenols that are a little bit more powerful in anti-aging effects as well. And if you're drinking either one, because both are a diuretic and dehydrate the body, which means it dehydrates the extracellular matrix um, proteins in the skin, be sure to be drinking water as well. If you drink coffee or tea every day like me, just make sure that your intake of water is kind of um, balancing and rehydrating you after um, you know having those diuretics on board in your diet every day. So the next is processed and packaged foods. So there's a lot of sodium 
additives and chemicals that are added to processed foods that you want to avoid for several obvious reasons. But to get down into the scientific pathophysiology of it, the excess um, glycosylation, the oxidative stress, the free radicals, the enzymes, the collagenases, the matrix metallic proteinases all get elevated with the ingestion of the preservatives in processed and packaged foods. So it also increases our cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone that we already talked about. So the more food that you can prep at home or you know eat as clean as possible and avoid packaged foods, the better. Also, sodium levels and you know glycemic spikes are negative and deleterious to collagen health and will increase the rapid breakdown of collagen fibers in the skin, um, creating pro-inflammatory and anti-aging accelerating phases in the skin. Preservatives can also increase sebum and oil production in the skin. And a lot of people have the misconception that oily skin is good. Your skin wants water, hydration, not oil to look its best. Sebum production and excess oil can lead to acne, clogged pores, pro-inflammatory dermatoses like rosacea and acne. It can also stretch out the the pores, it can enlarge the pores, it can clog the pores. Oil and excess sebum production is increased and elevated by the preservatives that we find in processed and packaged foods. And I want you guys to fight the misconception that oil and excess sebum is good for the skin because it is not. Remember your skin wants hydration, wants water, not excess oil and sebum. Next up on the list, environmental pollutions and environmental toxins. So things that are just in the ambient atmosphere can cause collagen breakdown in our skin. The environmental pollutions that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, we can't hide from that. We can only do so much to protect ourselves from that. Um, depending on where you live, if you live in the city or if you live out in the country, if you live on the beach, it may have different levels of those environmental toxins and pollutants that your skin's encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. But using a sunscreen that has iron oxides in it will help protect, protect, protect against oxidative stress free radical oxygen species and um, and increased collagenase and matrix metalloproteinase activity. So having a shield to help block it with iron oxides and by ingesting healthy, clean foods that have antioxidant protection protection and free radical scavengers like antioxidants and vitamin C, vitamin D, E, A, K, green leafy vegetables, and nutrients that are going to help protect our skin from oxidative stress, from free radicals that our skin encounters on a day-to-day -day basis is really, really important for protecting the collagen in your skin. Another entity that can increase collagen breakdown in our skin and accelerate aging is poor or low quality skincare or poor or low quality makeup. Remember, what we put on our face day in and day out has a profound impact on our skin. And if you're using low quality skincare products that could be causing harm and breaking down your collagen, and even more so makeup, chemicals and ingredients in makeup can induce pro-inflammatory cascades, can break down our collagen and elastin in addition to clogging our pores and accelerating aging. So always remember also to use high quality medical grade skincare products if you can and use clean ingredients in your beauty and cosmetics and your makeup. Always make sure that you're washing your face before and after a workout and definitely before going to bed at night, no matter how tired you must be. Because when you sleep with makeup on your skin, it increases cascades and inflammatory cascades that can break down our collagen and our elastin and accelerate aging. Makeup can contain harsh or damaging or deleterious ingredients, chemicals, and toxins. And so it's really, really um, important to be aware of what you're putting on your skin day in and day out over a lifetime. Nutrient deficiencies. So nutrients are important in collagen synthesis and maintenance. Vitamin C, for example, is a cofactor in the collagen synthesis pathway. So not ingesting enough vitamin C and even more so if you're not using it topically on a day-to-day -day basis can not protect your collagen and increase its degradation and diminish its restoration. We're going to talk about this much more in next week's video where I also talk about nutrient deficiency, especially with ozempic and semaglutide and some of these weight loss um, products that people are using, um, accelerating nutrient deficiency, which can wreak havoc and increase and accelerate aging in the skin. We're going to talk about that in next week's video, in addition to supplements that you can take to help restore collagen and build a healthy collagen for beautiful, healthy, glowing skin. 
So we've come to our final topic of this video. Is it too late for me to build collagen at age 40, 50, 60, 70, and beyond? Before I give you an answer to that, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss next week's video, which is going to be a game changer. Today, we discussed all the things that could be harming and degrading your collagen, but in next week's video, I'll give you all the tools and keys you need to help restore and build and maintain healthy collagen for healthy skin. Next week, we're also going to discuss the hotly debated topic of collagen supplements and collagen peptides and whether or not they actually work. All right, let's answer the question to our last topic. And is it too late for me to stimulate collagen synthesis and build collagen in my 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond? And the answer is no. Remember, our skin is a dynamic organ system. It's a living, breathing, responsive, dynamic organ system. It responds to stimulus, whether that stimulus is a laser, whether it's UV light, whether it's oxidative stress, whether it's a retin-A, whether it's a medical grade skincare product, whether it's a peel, it's responsive, it's receptive, it's adaptable, and it's dynamic. So even if you haven't been taking care of your skin up to a certain point in your life, it's never too late to start. And also, stimulating collagen by in-office procedures or things that you do at home, your skin is adaptable and it's responsive to stimulus, whether it starts in your 20s or in your 40s or in your 60s. Say you've lived your life up to this point and you haven't taken care of your skin, it's never too late to start and the changes are dramatic. Once you cross over and you start taking care of your skin and having healthy lifestyle habits that can increase your collagen stores and protect the healthy collagen that you have and increase your body's reproducible ability to synthesis new pro collagen and to protect the collagen you have and maintain a healthy collagen balance, that can happen at any age, even if you didn't start younger. And I'll explain how and why in my next video when we talk about things that you can do at home or in the office to increase collagen stores and protect the collagen that you have. But remember, just because you may be an older chronological age, your skin isn't. It can adapt and respond and act and behave decades younger than your physiologic or chronical age. So you can have a 60-year-old patient who under the microscope has 40-year-old skin. And studying skin under the microscope for decades and seeing how skin responds to different circumstances and different factors has been an intriguing part of dermatology and what led me to become a dermatologist and my interest in this field. Looking at people under the microscope when doing a skin biopsy on a 60-year-old patient and saying, okay, this skin looks 60 years old, and having this person do a procedure in the office or starting them on a new skincare regimen that they've been performing and using for three months and doing another biopsy and looking at that skin under the microscope and when the skin under the microscope looks like a 35 year old but she's 60 and it's the same skin that used to look 60 it's a dynamic and responsive organ system so I can't emphasize that enough in next week's video I'll tell you tricks of the trade and things that will help induce your collagen synthesis and protect the collagen that you have and no it is never too late no matter what age you are thank you for spending time with me this evening it's the end of my day I had a full clinic today where I did procedures all day long on my patients who I love so much ending the day by making this video for you guys and getting this educational content out to you makes my heart full and makes me happy so as always I'm not sponsored. I love you guys. I do this for you. Drop a comment in the comment section and we hope to see you next week for the second part of this collagen video.